So, so this is mostly going to be like an improvised uh, hands on. You're gonna, you're gonna do the same as yesterday, or no? Nope. I, I wanted to 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 start from very very basics, like how to write Aqua, run it, compile, and see what, what happens. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, this is the workshop I'm gonna go to. <laughs> no, it, it, it's not gonna be the same. Okay. Yeah, I yeah. figured that we like have some people who already seen it, and it, it was kind of complex, so uh, I wanted to start easy. Makes sense with Python. That's yeah. perfect. So there's like a the the services themselves, the computations, they can be in any language mm -hmm. that's like com compilable to WASM right now, but we're also considering about uh, adding more runtimes, mm -hmm. like JavaScript and stuff. Mm -hmm. So yeah, and you can also on uh, browser peers, you can also describe computations in JavaScript or TypeScript and on Rust peers, you can describe them in Rust because that's mm -hmm. kind of the code, the code itself that's in the particles uh, is that like yeah it is. yeah okay. it's it's like exa exactly this code but compiled to air this like okay. big, big, big stuff so, I, I so the algorithms themselves are kind of coordinated from the bottom up there's no like higher level code yeah they're, they're card it's coordinator free mm -hmm. so whenever you have a script you just send it to the network and when it comes to it like comes to some peer that you send it to it looks at the script and thinks what sh what it should do next. Like it's the interpreter that says, "Hey, you should send this particle to the other peer, or first make some call or stuff like that." So, uh, for example, like um, imagine that I wanted to to just uh, talk to some peer. I, I know the there is a network. I want to know something about it. I want to do to start like simple and gradually implement something complex, but first thing I would do is like ask for some information from peers in the network, right? And we usually you, you can do that through curl in REST, uh, I mean in Web2 world, you, you just get some requests and get some info back. That's also possible in Aqua. It will look something like that. Yeah, is it, is it big enough? Should I make it bigger? Okay, so here I, I defined a function that would go uh, like to uh, to some node that I am connected to, retrieve some information about the peer and return it back to my local laptop. Let's just run it. One moment, I will close a sec. Let's just run it and see what comes out of it. So, uh, how how it usually looks the running uh, of a of a function? Yeah, there are like several ways to do that. The Can you do make it bigger. Yeah, I'm, I'm making. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The problem is the host name is big. Okay. <laughs> Wonder if it change. No, it didn't. Hmm? Yeah, great. This is better. So, um, how do I run the function? Like, uh, there is an Aqua CLI tool. Uh, what it can do, it can both compile Aqua code to Air, JavaScript, and TypeScript, or run it right away. Let me show you how, how it looks. I just do Aqua run. I uh, specify what peer to connect to. Like I know there is a peer alias by like stage. Uh, we have a stage network and there are several peers. Second one I will connect to. I will explain how it works a little bit later. Um, I specify the file that I want to load my code from. Like I know that there is a basic Aqua file here um, and I want to use it. And I specify function name uh, get info from relay. Info. Now we'll just run it and get some information back to me. Um, like, let's review a little bit what what happens here. I will uh, add pr minus minus print air so it like prints the actual script that's being like used. Let me 
do it a little bit like that. Yeah. So here you can see that what what actually happens is uh, we're going to a, some node called relay, some peer called relay. We call this function peer identify. We store that information in a variable called info and we send it back send it back to my local laptop and call in the function console log. So basically we're instructing my laptop to just log the information that been received from the network. We can gradually like make uh, this stuff more and more complex. For example, if we uh, don't want to like here, uh, it's written that we always go to a peer that we use as a relay, as an entry, entry point to the network. But we can go a little bit complex, more complex, and we can get info from, from any other peer. Yeah, it would be the same, except the on would be peer via host peer ID. Why? I expected this, that reaction, by the way. So, this function does basically uh, the same thing as this one, but it you, uh, executes peer identify on a different peer, not on relay, but uh, on the peer that I would specify here in arguments of a function. So, where do I get uh, the peer ID of a peer that I want to use? I can ask my friends who run nodes I can like Google it on forums. Yeah. Imagine there are forums about Fluence. But right now uh, we're running uh, several peers on our own and we have them configured, uh, like we have them stored uh, in the Aqua CLI. And we can just, this is just a list of the network that we're using for testing things. It's called Stage. Just deployed the newest bleeding edge version of Fluence Rust peer. Now we'll just use it. I'm taking peer ID from one of the nodes, and I I'm doing basically the same as before. I'm just going to reuse. Yeah, and now I'm call, will call not the function get info from relay, but instead I will call a function get info from, and we'll specify. Pure idea, just copy paste it and let's see what happens. Yeah, we get this result and imagine we call, not imagine, let's call the previous function and see whether it's different or print, print error. A little bit messy, sorry. Yeah. So this is, we're calling this function and second command, we're calling get info from and specifying the argument here. And we get different results because it's different nodes, they have different multi-addresses, different ports open, stuff like that. But you can see, for example, the those stage nodes, they're actually running like on a single host, but we have different networks and where that spawn uh, different hosts, not just a single one. Okay. Question, what's you imported from the, the first line? Yeah, um, yeah, we have a, like a standard library of a kind, yeah, uh, and it contains different things. For example, it contains uh, like it contains peer ID type. Let me show you. Uh, yeah, it, it, it contains alias type for peer ID that's basically a string, but for readability, we call it peer ID. It contains uh, the identify service, like I, it contains service called peer that every peer in the network implements. And uh, it's just a kind of API that's available by default on peers in the network. Yeah, you can extend this API by, by either deploying services, and so it, it can be dynamic. Uh, and in that case, instead of peer, you would have a service ID here. But this is a built-in API, the one that that's like handy to use. Like for example, you can check whether some peer is connected. Uh, what Al Alfonso was asking about, like a context, you can like explore routing table. You can ask 
appear to connect to someone or resolve its address, uh, get time, current timestamp of appearance, stuff like that. It's pretty pretty vast API, useful for different tasks, and that's built in. That's why it's called built-in Aqua. And that's just a library. You see, it's in node modules. That's just a description of services, like typings for services that are available on all peers by default. And I'm using, yeah. The, the, sorry, the PID, for instance, and like you identify all of that, let's say all of these types and services that have a direct mapping with the HTTP world, are they validated? Meaning like if you, the app of the app validates that the PID is actually mm -hmm. a PID or Right now, AquaVM doesn't validate whether it's peer ID. That broaders some some problems when instead of peer ID you just put garbage okay, and okay, it okay. just doesn't work. But uh, when uh, AquaVM sees a call to some peer ID, it says to the peer, "Hey, let's make a topological hop to that peer ID." And in its like way, uh, the peer validates the peer ID. And if it's not a valid peer ID, it says, "Hey, I can't reach this okay. stuff. What did you give me?" Okay, yeah. so there's some implicit validation there. Yeah. And then for the identified protocol, it means that you need a little to be host, which actually runs the identified, not the good right? Uh Yeah, this uh, this specific function, it doesn't like call the lip to p identify ah, protocol. Okay. It just returns information about a node. Okay. So that's okay, so just kind of name clashing. Yeah, but we... Okay, uh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I thought it was that, that you like trigger the identified protocol. In but it's case. totally possible. Like we, we've connect uh, and get contact, we trigger Kademle, protocol mm -hmm. yeah and we go to Kademli okay. routing table so it's totally possible to to write a, a service that would call uh, identify or gossip or whatever and just issue messages mm -hmm. and wait them back totally possible so yeah that's what I'm importing from built-in aqua and that's just the type definition that lives on npm js uh, on npm I mean on package manager you can just uh, install this fluence lab slash aqualib and you will get those typings and you can use them. That's exactly what I did actually. I have I have this like f uh, fluence aqualib uh, that contains built-ins. That's just an npm package. Okay. And I'm importing types from there so I can use them. So what happens here in this function? Where uh, I, I asked Aqua to go on this peer through relay and call uh, a function peer identify on this peer and return information back to me. I added this part that Dmitry reacted to uh, just to be more explicit about what happens. This actually is implicit. Uh, language adds this implicitly always. When you because when you connect to the network, you connect there through some node. You can, should always specify somehow. Uh, and so all the topology uh, hops, they should start with the relay. They go from your local laptop then to the relay and then to the, no to the network. It could be a complex topology, but it always starts with the relay unless you in some near future, it would be it would be possible to connect several JavaScript peers together to do like a test network, and then you wouldn't need a relay, really. But right now, since your JavaScript peers they can be behind not not not, you need to some way to to send and receive messages, and that's why you need the relay. That's a, that's a good question. Like, what if um, you have your own peer? Mm -hmm. uh, th there is no like uh, you can peer whole punching support right now like in Rust P2P it, it was recently added pretty several months ago or something yeah. so we, once we will, we will enable it it will uh, be used automatically on the P2P level but if you have like a local peer uh, and you just want to connect to it from your from say Aquaran you just specify like local host and Port and just connect and interact with it. Yeah, we, we have any problems. Yeah, and if you need it, you can remove all this relaying logic by the flag in the compiler and it will yeah. compile it up. Yeah, that's possible too. 
So we can get uh, a little bit uh, more fancy uh, with what we can do. Like, and we can do some hello. For example, I, I, I don't want to get the whole info from the peer. I want to get only version. Yeah, for example, from my relay. And I want to return it as a, as a string. Okay. So the same code. Yeah, and I return info not version. How do I know what, what, what it's called? Because there is a data uh, info here. It's typed, all type checked. And I know that there is a field called not version and I use it and return. I'm just uh, showing you some simple things that can transform the data. It can like, obviously be more complex. So, and we got the, the node version here. And for example, we, we could, instead of just this simple thing, we can do something like, uh, we can concatenate strings, right? There is a concat strings function here, and we can just do op concat strings, a version is something like that, and run it and it will transform our data further. And this way you can like program different stuff with simple, very, very simple transformations or more complex transformations. Um, but you can like start simple and iteratively go more complex and more. So uh, working with one, one peer isn't very like fun. So we can uh, like get version, uh, do a get versions uh, function that would ask for versions from several peers and return that info to us, for example. Well, so, sir, can yeah. you show how you run uh, Antwerp? Mm -hmm. The Antwerp run to what? Uh, yeah, like this. Yes, yeah, so you have uh, you specify the, uh, the script, the function, and the network, right? Yeah, and uh, not the network, the, the specific host. So. This is basically a multi-address, just alias for like simplicity. But if, if I do, uh, if I take a look here, I can just copy paste this multi-address and use it instead of stage 02. It would be the same thing. Yeah, it doesn't compile because I wrote incorrect code. Didn't finish yet. So yeah, it's just a multi-address, just an alias for, for brute. So, what, what, for example, we, we will, so a lot of times we want to traverse several peers, ask information from them, return it or process somehow. Let's, let me show you how to do that. So we, we're iterating through all peers in the array that's passed by us, to us. It could be peer ID, the same thing. We're doing on peer to move our computations to that peer, then we do the same thing, right? But we want to collect uh, not a single variable, but a list of variables, right? So we create a stream that's uh, able to hold infos and we write to it and we return it. So what happens here, we will go to every peer in this array and on it, we, we will gather peer identify info and return it back to our to console and print it. So let's do exactly that. Get versions and we need to pass an array of peer IDs here. For example, I will take this peer ID because I like it and I will take this peer ID because I like it as well. So yeah, let me make it like wider. So I'm just calling get versions function and passing arguments there, right? And passing two peer IDs there. Let's run it. And we get two uh, info objects back. But uh, that's not very like fun. This sequential, we go to one peer, then to another. It could take, if we have hundreds of peers here, that would take a lot of time. So we can add par here. Can you 
anyone guess what would happen if I just parallelize this uh, loop? <laughs> okay. I know the answer. Yeah, you know, you know. So since this is parallelized, it will it will just complete immediately, and uh, messages will be sent to all the peers, but result will never return back because we never asked result to be returned back. We never wait for actual data to become available on my local laptop. So for example, let me run it and we will get an empty array. Sometimes we, will, uh, we might not get empty arrays, if there are particles coming to us, they will bring the information. Sometimes that happens, and that's like by design. But here, since it's a very simple script, we will always get an empty array back. So let's wait for, for two uh, elements to appear in Info's array, Info's stream. I am writing one because like it's zero index, so that's why. But that's not very like, you know, what if I pass only, pass more peer IDs here or pass only one? It will just hang forever because, you know, it, it, it asks, let's wait until there are two elements. And that will like never happen. So I need to do something about that. Uh, what I will do, uh, I will use uh, array length function that's also a built-in function provided by all peers, but it's not a problem to implement your own function like that. If you want not an array length, but I'm not sure, sort my array by some strange criteria, then you can implement it as well. We just provide some things to, so it's quick, easy to experiment. So array length, um, peers, would that work? What do you think? I know. <laughs> Let me get some interactivity there. <laughs> so yeah, I had to do uh, minus one because it's uh, zero based. So now it always waits for all the uh, all the peers to answer me. But what will happen if I pass a peer that's either incorrect peer ID or just down? Right, what will happen if I change something here? It will just hang again, right? Because this peer, it's unavailable. It's, it's either down or doesn't exist at all. So how do I handle that? There is a way to put a timeout here. Like you can do a parallel. Uh, so the idea, what, it's called a race pattern. And the idea is that I have a join uh, clause here, join expression, that will wait until there are this many uh, messages available, this many infos available. And I, in parallel, I start a process that's called peer timeout, that I can pass, for example, one second there, and some message to return. Uh, and what will happen? is this process will run in parallel with this process through a pipe, right? And whatever happens first, I don't care, I just move on. So at this point, I just, I will just move on, no matter what, how many infos are there. So those two lines will complete either when there are this many infos uh, available or after one second. It's a race pattern in this sense. So we have like three peers right now. Two of them are available and one isn't available. And we can handle this like gracefully. We can always, if this is a reliable open network, there are peers who constantly go down and not run by us. So we have to like write code around that. And that's the way to do that. One question. Yeah. Do you handle any kind of versus Retransmissions or like, so mm -hmm. if uh, I mean I'm wondering if like you 
you run in the SACO machine, you lose connection, and then it's recovered. Mm -hmm. Do you hand over the machines, or do you just no. like fail the fail the execution, and you have to start? Uh, you can like implement retrans retransmissions here. Okay, so you will. Yeah. Okay, you will explicitly say the yeah. policy of the transmission that you want. Yeah. So Aqua doesn't like doesn't have any uh, coined decisions like. <laughs> okay. Yeah, uh, you have to like implement no, on your it. own or or uh, use uh, it from standard library. So it will bring some algorithms for you to use. But yeah, you can do anything you want. You have these primitives like send message, call function, wait for something. But on top of that, you can implement basically any algorithm of waiting. It will require recursion, and we have it. So yeah. Okay. Um, what else? What else? Uh, yeah, well, do you want to see how it's compiled to like uh, how it's compiled to TypeScript or JavaScript? Anyone wants to see ugly TypeScript <laughs> or beautiful one? Whatever, whatever you're. It's beautiful when you use it. Yeah, it's beautiful. Okay. So one one thing that I was so because these these services mm -hmm. they can be any arbitrary piece of code, right? That yeah. Can run some words, and it means that it could be like. Uh, JS uh, script or a WASM module or mm -hmm. whatever. Yeah. How do you at attach that as a service? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's a good question. We have like recently developed a thing that's called plugins that allows you to attach any JavaScript code to your local Aquaram instance. I will show you in a moment. So because the, the concept yeah. is that I, I want to run some WASM in your node uh -huh. like, or in images in your node. So I yeah. do the, the route. So I have to load it in my peer so no. that it's available and then send, but, but he doesn't have a script. So you, I, I need to send it with the, with the execution. Yeah, if, the it, if he doesn't, it doesn't have it. So once you have a WebAssembly file or several of them, you can, can combine them to a service and deploy it to his node. So you deploy it as a, as a actual service. Yeah, yeah, oh, as okay. a like microservice, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah and no, it will, and it will be there. You have to provide the, so that the service, it didn't have a way of like bundling the, 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 not the one, the, the program or the service that needs to run. Uh, so because the, the abstraction is that you have a service, right? Yeah. Which is what I move around. But then these services may be calling WASM functions. Or WASM no, no, no. Uh, so uh, the abstraction, uh, abstraction is as following. You, you have like those orchestration scripts that mm -hmm. orchestrate services. And you can uh, either have built-in services like those ones, they're written in Rust on peers, or you can have a WASM file deployed okay. to a peer and it will be available there. That's why I'm interested, like how do we use things that are not by design? Like, because here all the services that you're using are built -in. from the, the, the built-in ones that are written in Aqua, so it yeah. makes sense. But like, I'm curious to know, like, how can I, uh, I have a, my new indexing mm -hmm. uh, script, how can I, Bundling in a service and send it to yeah. So, uh, so the, uh, that's yeah. Uh, I can like uh, yeah, sorry, so from from. You were going to no, no, no. That's a great, great question. Uh, I'm just saying that uh, I'm going now to to show the code from previous workshop so that okay. might, might might recall something. So the idea is that uh, I can deploy a WASM files as a service to any uh, peer in the network as long as they allow it. Allow it. Okay, so this upload is the one that loads the service? This upload is what uh, it interacts with the IPFS node. Let me show you. So yeah, here is where I got lost the other day because this mm -hmm. upload, what you're doing is like you're doing an IPFS act. Yeah. Then you take the CAD and then mm -hmm. the other node, it gets it downloads from, from but if, if you don't have IPFS, so if I don't have an IPFS site mm -hmm. available, would I be able to steal? Yeah. Use? Okay. That's what we started with, but it wasn't very optimal. Like we loaded the WebAssembly module as base 64 into Aqua and sent okay. it over the network. And you can imagine the overhead. And yeah. yeah I see, I see. That really is. But because I was thinking like some LibTP hosts may not have IPFS available. Yeah. yeah. So that's why I was. Yeah, and uh, in, in that case, we need some eff effective protocol for sending a lot of bytes over the network. And IPFS seems like a natural choice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and uh, that's why I, I'm uh, for a few weeks been thinking about possibility to use 
P2P protocols directly from services, like instead of using IPFS as a sidecar, have uh, BitSwap implemented uh, yeah, as a web, web assembly service. And you give, you give it like, hey, read this file and send data as BitSwap over the network. And that would be orchestrated for Aqua, but still work over IPFS protocols if the peer uh, supports it. Yeah, so that's the, the, that's kind of where I would love to move with all this, at least experiment on it. Yeah. And here, the, this function allows, you, uh, allows uh, me to uh, upload and deploy WebAssembly services to a set of peers. So I have like predefined set of peers that I know that would love to see my service deployed on them. And that's what, exactly what I do. Uh, and here, uh, the yeah uh, let me like step a, a few steps back and, and show you how like plugins work that may be, may make the services concept more clear yeah so for example what uh, what uh, could i want from a plugin let's uh, do, do do a simple stuff like just printing something to console right so some service that I call log log, right? And it will log a message string just, it will do something. This is the typing for, for it. And, and for example, I do it like this. Yeah, or oh, service, it should be service. And now I need to like implement this thing. So I need to like implement this this is just a type definition. It's not a working code. I need to implement uh, the service. And let me do exactly that. So, for example, uh, all you need from from a from a service is for not a service but a plugin. Uh, all you need is for it to be an MJS and return a plugins object of this format so we let me remind you we had these typings right yeah and now i am gonna to like implement a service that type checks so that's gonna be a log 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 object because this service id is log 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 function that takes an msg string and just i don't know does something like this can do like I'm not sure if this works in uh, uh, in, in the JavaScript. <laughs> Maybe not too too long. Okay, it can do some something like this, or it could could you know store a file to local disk or anything really. It's just an effect that happens locally. So let me just just call this quant basic. Not very basic anymore. Uh, I will specify other because it's required by Aquaran, but we will won't, won't use any networking action. It's just CLI requirement. So and also I need to use plugins, I believe, uh, and it's going to be and func function name plugin none. None. Yeah, but it makes it because it's changing your name. Yeah. Uh, why? You constant log. Uh, yeah, that's yeah, okay. That's, that's yeah, so JavaScript. Okay, yeah, yeah. JavaScript. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Since, uh, yeah, I I would expect it to 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 repeat yeah. the stuff, but it didn't. So yeah, uh, and this way, this this is a pretty res recent addition to Aquaran, like one day before the conference, uh, uh, our team member so, edited it. Uh, it's awesome really it changed how, how uh, I approach writing like workshops and examples because previously I didn't have an access to for example IPFS JS right I had to like first upload it through JavaScript then from JavaScript call Aqua to use the uploaded file but right now now what I can do I can implement IPFS client upload function and it will be available from Aqua right away. And that's exactly how, I, so that's the same thing. Like it's a plugin that has 
plugins returning an object that has like a name and a function and it takes multi-address and path to load from file system and upload. And that's exactly how I do like deploying. I just use upload, IPFS client upload, and that's it. It just uses local JavaScript code. It's pretty awesome actually. I wish we can deploy JavaScript code to our cloud peers, to Rust peers, and we'll, we'll be able to do that one day. Yeah. I'm not sure. I guess that's it. I'm not sure. I think that's pretty enough. Mm -hmm. Thanks.